Today we use the shot bod to make the final pieces of our full-sized apple box, the faces. The first thing we're going to do is use a straight bit to cut two registration holes into the spoil board itself. That's because we're going to need to machine both sides of our workpiece today, which requires us to do this little trick. And obviously we're very careful to set the depth of these holes correctly so that we don't drill through the spoil board and into the aluminum bed of the machine. Then I'll mount my workpiece. Now if you're wondering why I don't always just mount the piece with the bottom left corner of it at zero zero, it's because I want to find a fresh part of the spoil board that doesn't have too many mounting holes in it so that the screws have something to bite into. Our apple box face is going to have two handle holes. There are two different methods we can use to cut them out and we'll show you both. The first is to make a profile toolpath as we did in the previous two videos. This time we specify that the machine cut to the inside of the line rather than the outside because that's what we've drawn here, the negative space of the handle. And we add tabs around the edge of the cut so that we don't have a free floating piece in the middle which might jam up the bit or get thrown around. Now you'll notice that I place the tabs along the straight edges and not the curves. This is because when it comes time to remove the tabs, it's always easier to file and sand a flat surface than it is a curved one. However, by the end of this video, you'll see that in this particular case it doesn't matter because we're going to remove the tabs by another means. So this is just habit. Now for the second handle hole, we're going to use what's called a pocket toolpath. While a profile toolpath cuts along a line in your drawing and only cuts the width of the bit, a pocket toolpath automatically clears out everything within a closed shape that you've selected. Next we set up the toolpath for the overall outline of the part, the same way we did in the previous two videos, and once again we leave tabs all around to hold the finished part in place. Lastly, I'll pocket out two registration holes on either side of the part, outside of the outline. These are the same size and the same distance apart from each other as the two registration holes that I cut into the spoil board. Now we select all four of the toolpaths we just created and the software combines them into a single cutting file that we send in the machine. So here's the handle cut via profile and here's the handle cut via pocket. As you can see, a pocket toolpath is what you'd use if you were cutting a mortise or a slot that needs to be wider than the bit or if you were hollowing out an area to create a depression. Before demounting the piece, we want to round the edges of the handle holes over, so we'll switch to the point round over bit. And do a profile tool pad. I'll cut the tabs off and get rid of the plug. So that takes care of one side of the handles. But with a finished apple box, the handles are rounded over on both sides for ergonomic sake. And now that I've taken this part off of the machine, I can't just flip it over, throw it back on the machine by eye, and do the other side. Because even using my spool board grid to locate my workpiece, I can't be as precise as the shop bud is, and my roundovers wouldn't line up precisely with the existing handle holes. They might be off by a millimeter or so. That's why we've cut these registration holes. I'll stick two dowels into them and use these to position the workpiece on as I flip it over. Then I'll screw the workpiece back down. Over on the drawing, here's the layer I use to drill the registration holes into the spoil board. I'll take the outline of the apple box face and drag it over so that the registration holes match. Now when I tell the machine to cut the roundovers, I get perfect results. And rounding over on this side also handily cleaned up the tabs. 